Hey friends and family, we're back at the audiobook of this fictional drama meets uh, mental health awareness as a nurse of 30 years and still going on the front lines of emergency and mental health. Let's jump into the story. We're at chapter 22 with my fake studio microphone and fake Hollywood lights. I don't have the fake studio audience, so you'll just have to cheer and leave your comments. Whether you prefer me to hide behind the book and read or read in front of you. And you can leave an honest comment. I promise my feelings won't be hurt. After all, I'm an emergency and mental health nurse. I have been insulted before. And no matter what your profession, I'm sure you get insulted too. And you know, in this podcast, in this series, we learn ways of dealing with that also. So we're going to jump into chapter 22. It's called Damsels in Danger. And this is from the fictional drama series, The Mental Files. And book one is Sheep Among Wolves. There are six books in this series. And if you feel like you've missed out and you want to go back and listen from the beginning after today or before today, it's super easy. I'm going to let you know how at nurseand.com. There's a podcast tab where I have all the chapters in order. It's also on the social media, but it's easier to find there. Not only that, it's on Amazon and other book sites and on my website, nurseand.com. That's and with an E. There are links there. I put all six books also in one book to make it easier. The Mental Falls First Six Stories edition. So let me start reading because I know you didn't come for a commercial. I'm going to put this fake microphone down for a minute and we're going to get started. So we're on chapter 22, Damsels in Danger. Yesterday we finished the other chapter, which, uh, well, we had a rat sneaks in and then encourage one another. You know, in this mental health drama, the frontline workers, the nurses, the caseworker have rescued Julie off the streets. She was battling those frightening hallucinations and trying to fend for herself with Carlos, her so-called boyfriend, trying to trick her into his life. And now he's tricked her out of the hospital and the nurses and the caseworker are frantic frantic they're gonna go try to find her even though they don't know what they're getting into it might be dangerous their er nurse friend tried to warn them but they knew they had to go try to rescue her so chapter 22 damsels in danger dun 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 driving around the area where she had found julie the other night lita started to get worried when there was no trace of the vulnerable girl. Starting to panic, the ladies rolled down their window and asked the young man standing on the corner if he had seen a young lady with some guy named Carlos. Who wants to know? Answered Mars in a panicked voice. Hey, I'm her caseworker and we think she's in real danger, informed Lita to the nervous looking young man standing awkwardly on the street corner. And I'm her nurse. The girl really needs our help, pleaded the desperate medical worker. Knowing in his heart that the ladies were probably right, Mars took a chance. Where was I? And quietly pointed to the building across the street. Hey, you didn't hear nothing from me, warned the frightened new drug dealer. Of course, young man, you're probably saving a life, offered the ladies. As the girls parked on the sidewalk and ran toward the building, Mars thought to himself how he liked the idea of saving someone's life. Breaking out of his short daydream about being a hero, Mars suddenly thought, Oh no, those nice ladies can't go in there. What do I do? He panicked. As the girls edged up to the dark building, they could hear the faint voice of a girl. That's her, whispered Angela. What do we do? asked Lita. I'm going to call Kylina and tell her where we're at, whispered the nurse. Calling her friend at the ER, she got an answering machine on the nurse's cell phone. As she described where they were on the message, she suddenly was pushed from behind and her phone went flying. Oh my, what are you two busybodies think you're doing? demanded Carlos. Get in here, you meddling fools as he ordered them inside the building where they saw the crying girl they had been looking for. <sighs> Back at the ER, the nurse was so caught up with an emergency, she didn't even see the message on her phone. 
danger. As Mars stood on the corner wondering what he should do about the drama, continuing inside the building, Miss Lita, Nurse Angela, cried out the frightened Julie. Shut up, you little brat, Carlos yelled at the frightened girl. Who told you ladies to get in my business, demanded the angry criminal. So you must be the famous Carlos, spoke up the frightened nurse. Yeah, what's it to ya? replied the intimidating thug. Hey, we don't want any trouble. Just let us take Julie back to the hospital. That's where she needs to be at, spoke up Lita. <laughs> yeah, right. You're dreaming, retorted Carlos. So we just finished that chapter, which was titled, what was the title of that? Damsels in Danger. We're getting near the end of book one. You don't want to miss it. If you've got that fear of missing out, you can go back and watch it from episode one, chapter one, as I said on the nurseand.com podcast, an audiobook. There's a podcast tab where I read them in order. And then we break it apart as it relates to our own life drama and inner thought struggles and get some help for that. So next chapter is titled, oh, chapter 23 is a dangerous rescue. You don't want to miss that. The frontline workers, the mental health struggles, the crime, the danger, what's going to happen? So as a nurse of 30 years and still going, I'm still going. That's why I can't have the fancy captions and all the fancy artwork on the videos. So please, we got the fake spatula, the studio lights. That's all I can do for now because I'm a nurse of 30 years and this part and still going. So I'm working a lot and trying to crank this out for you because I believe in this. It's adventure, action, awareness, and advocacy, mental health struggles, thought drama, relationship drama that we all go through. So let's break this apart now as it relates to real life as promised on the nurseand.com podcast. So I also created this devotional. It's called Energized Health, Body, Mind, and Spirit by Nurse Anne. That's me. It's also available on the nurseand.com website. There's a link to this. But kind of related to what we are reading we're, um, as I said, I'm a nurse of 30 years on the front lines of emergency and mental health. And so sometimes people can feel angry at others, whatever job, family situation, neighborhood situation, relationship situation, and people get angry so we can all relate to that. And so this is an area that can trip us up. This is the section about the mind. Another area that can trip us up is feeling angry towards others and holding a grudge. Also, dealing with difficult co-workers, family, community members, and others. Working as an emergency and mental health nurse, I have encountered this situation probably every day. How about you? Frontline workers get yelled and cursed at, even threatened or attacked with violence. Like that time I got slapped in triage. I'll tell you about that another time. Anyway. Some specific communication techniques and tips for dealing with difficult people have helped me. I'm going to share some of them that have helped me. Number one, remember to stay calm. So staying calm is important, but on a side note, don't tell the other person to relax or be calm. That's probably one of the worst things you could do. I don't want you to get hurt. So remembering to stay calm because getting mad and flustered only makes things worse. It's helpful when we can control our own reactions, even when we can't control the reactions of others. Also, standing firm and being assertive, but in a gracious manner. So not standing over them, you know, being better than. Just standing your ground, but in a gracious and assertive manner. And then, this is so important, I really have seen this in action on the job and other situations. So listen to the other's frustration, provide eye contact, and genuinely listen and show that you care. Guys, this goes a long way towards you not getting hurt, towards helping the other person calm, feeling like they're being listened to. And so a great teaching point from Proverbs 15 also has helped me through the years in these types of situations. And 15 says, a soft answer or a gentle answer 
turns away wrath, turns away anger. But, you know, grievous words, angry words back at the other person, they just stir the anger up and it doesn't get us anywhere. And so through the uh, lots of opportunities I've had to try and practice this, I found that these words really do work. And when someone knows that you care and are willing to listen wholeheartedly and show respect and not stoke the fire of anger in return, most of the time the person will loosen their grip on their fury. And it's also good to clarify what the other person said and repeat it back to avoid any misunderstandings. Listen to the facts, stay objective. Sometimes a timeout is needed. And we also have to know when the issue should be over and move on instead of going in the same circle. How many times have you seen your coworkers, family, just keep, they don't want to give up, they want to be right. But you know, sometimes you got to move on or it, it's just going to go on forever. And so James 119, my beloved brethren, everyone needs to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So that's from Energize Health, one more devotional. You're going to love this. It's interesting words. And then I pair it with real life and we get some biblical prescriptions. It's word puzzles devotional by nurse and me. Okay. Today is from the letter K. This is an A to Z format. This word is knavery. What does it mean? Untrustworthy, dishonest dealing, trickery, trickery, like that guy on the car, uh, corner trying to get Julie back into a bad situation. I have to out talk this train so the game of life offers endless opportunities for shortcuts to attain the so-called prize tax return adjustments obtaining answers for an exam hanging out while co-workers do all the work and the labor huh, hate that discounted wares from an unsavory vendor tricking the naive like carlos was tricking julie tricking the naive out of something you want for yourself overcharging, and many more schemes are there to entice with empty promises. Biblical examples of overcharging tax collectors, brothers screaming for an inheritance, women fighting over who is the best mother, and on and on it goes. We might secure material perks and advantages by these deceptive routes, but at what cost? We are cautioned in Mark 8.36 that we could gain everything this world has to offer, but in the price process, lose our own soul. No bueno. Think about it. Your soul. No way do you want to lose that. You only get one. Guard your priceless treasure. Walk with integrity. Even God warns in Proverbs 11 that he hates dishonest measures. But he does delight in honorable lives. So make your choice. I tell you, you're going to love this devotional. It's actually a lot of fun while you get your devotional and you're learning interesting and or new words. And I hope you join the nurseand.com audiobook and podcast. You will actually love that website. I put so much there for you. There's healthy eating, health tips. There's life improv, which is creative and fun and you can get involved in. There's a featured arts, artist corner, which I can feature you on if you want. We don't want to hide behind the book like I do sometimes. There is <laughs> comedy, a kid at heart. There's a whole bunch of good stuff at the nurseand.com. That's and with an E website, the podcast tab where I read you these books for free. And you can also get them. They're actually only a couple dollars if you get them on Kindle. I don't want to overcharge because I'm an indie author, a new author. But I really want to do this for you because I know you'll enjoy the mental health awareness and advocacy, the fun words, the devotional, the energized health. Who doesn't want energized health? Yesterday we learned a new word called zappy and it's all about energized health and life. So check out the podcast, the website, come back for the next audiobook. We're about to finish up book one soon before we jump into book two. Have a great day day.